I need to stand in faith again. And if I don't have the word of God on it, if I don't have the word of God on it, I seek him. I seek the word of God on it. Because you can't get him to speak to your heart unless you seek him through his word. You see that? And so, you know, if I have, if, whatever it is, I don't care, whatever is going on in your life, there is a promise that will overcome it. I don't care what it is in your life. There's a, the Bible says that, that, that God's not going to let you be tempted or tried more than you can handle. That's what he said. And then people leave it there and they say, yeah, that's right, God, he's going to let me be tried, but he's not going to let me go all the way to where he's killing me. No, it's not what he said that for. He said that because most of the time before we get that word really settled in our heart, that trial is going to keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on. And then when we finally get that word settled in our heart, then we find that way of escape. The last part of that verse is he, he says, I'll make a way of escape for you. The word of God has is a way of escape for us. And whenever we, get, when we find that word and we use it, we use it. Say we use it. We use it. You got to use it. When you use it, then all of a sudden it shuts down whatever the temptation is, whatever the trial is. It it shuts it down. Sometimes it takes longer than others, but it'll shut it down. And if you'll stand in it, it'll stop it. Can you see this? This is really cool. I don't know if you like it or not, but I like it a lot. But anyhow, um, I want you to go with me to the Gospel of John. And we're going to uh, look at chapter 1, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse uh, 16, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 16. I think it's really crazy how close this, uh, uh, this, this same, same verses we're reading in, in this, in Romans, is the same verses we're reading in uh in the, the Gospel of John. But look what it says. It says, and this is the Amplified, out of his fullness. Now this is out of Jesus. And the fullness of Jesus, out of his fullness, it says, abundance. We have all received. Say we all receive it. We all received. Can, can I tell you that it's there for everybody? There's not a promise. The fullness of Jesus just think about it. You can't even fathom all Jesus is. And he's saying that this fullness is an abundance and we all have received it. Why isn't it working in our life? Why did it just boom, boom, boom? It's just boom, boom. Because you have to activate it by faith. You have to implement it, bring it into your life by faith. And faith is really simple. A positive reaction toward the word or toward the promise. It says, we have all received and all had a share in and we were all supplied with. They make it real clear that it's there and you can't get away from it unless you just choose to. One grace after another and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. And even favor upon favor and gifts are heaped upon gifts. This is what he's talk, what he's saying. This is the Amplified. Now, uh, the Amplified, uh, it makes it really clear. that In God's mind, in Jesus' purpose, is that he's made us completely acceptable <laughs> and accessible to his fullness. And it's free given to us freely we don't have to earn it all we got to do is accept it it's just like with this piece of cake i mean last night they put this picture of this cake i don't know if you can see it but they put a picture of this cake i'm gonna hold before and it's so nice so pecans on top and they put it and sandy bird put a picture of this cake on Facebook and everybody's right down there. Send me a piece, and I said you can't put this on picture on here without giving me a slice. <laughs> well, you know, I I, re I received. <laughs> you see my cake. I received my cake. That ain't problem. Without any problem, I didn't have to cook it. I I just had to. Here it is, right here for me to eat. Belongs to me now. 
you know, and Ron can't take it back because he, if he tries, he's in trouble. But, you know, the thing about it is, is it was a gift to me. This is a gift to you. What Jesus has given to you is a gift. It's free. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to do anything to it. All you got to do is receive it. My positive reaction toward Ron cutting that piece of cake was, wow, that's nice. Thank you so much. I love it. Man, it tastes so good. That's what God wants you to do with his promises. Receive them. I love it. Thank you so much. What all you've done for me, Lord. Thank you. And then verse 17, it says, For while the law was given through Moses, listen to this, grace, unearned, undeserved favor and spiritual blessing and truth came through Jesus Christ. Comes through Jesus. Don't come through nobody else. Comes through Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, what is the problem? What is the problem of receiving from God? Not receiving it. Because <laughs> he's giving it to you. What's the problem of receiving from God? Not receiving it. Or not believing it. Yeah, not believing it. You know, you got to believe it to receive it, right? I, I, you know what? I really had an anticipation of having a piece of cake last night. When I wrote that down there, I said, I bet you this is going to entice them to bring me at least a small slice. No, he brought the whole cake. Okay? <laughs> he said, gave me a nice piece of cake. I had an anticipation. I will, and now I have a positive response. And a positive response, I got a piece of cake. It's really that simple. Folks, you, and most people, they don't receive from God because they don't have a positive reaction toward God. And you know what? The thing about it is, is asking and receiving and thanksgiving are really all tied together. Now, I'm going to read a scripture here. This is in, this is in uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 24. It says, But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself. So, that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive uh, from the Lord. And this is Paul talking, of course, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. He's wanting to testify to the God. How many of you testify to what God has done or is doing in your life? You know, one of the things that, that I noticed in, in, in that the people who receive from God in the, there's the Bible says give it to God and in due time there's a time period in due time you receive cast your care on the Lord and he will exalt you in due time and in that due time period that's when you either succeed or fail you know that's when you succeed how do you succeed you succeed by saying, Lord, I just want to thank you for your gospel. I want to thank you for your grace. I want to thank you for the healing. I want to thank you for the finances. I want to thank you for the ability to forgive. I want to thank you for, you know, teaching me your word. I want to thank, Lord, I just bless you. Yeah, I can see it coming, just like I anticipated that cake coming. I can see it coming. Lord, I just want to thank you for it. I bless you for it. It's done as far as I'm concerned in Jesus' name. I call those things that be not as though they are. I call healing in my body. In Jesus' name, I call finances in my pocketbook. You know, whatever you, whatever it is, I just want to thank you. And in that middle, and you keep doing that, and you keep keeping that positive response and that thanksgiving toward God, <clears throat> the next thing you know, boom, there it is. It's in your life. You're thinking, man, and sometimes it comes from out of nowhere. You think, how did God do that? Well, he did it because he's... God, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I know faith, and I know be positive towards it, and you're supposed to go by his word, but if you come into a situation in life, and you don't know what word to go to, should you just tell the Lord, I don't know the word, but I'm positive, I'm coming to you, help me out of this, or... Well, you, if you got a situation in life, that's why they... They, they, God brought into existence these things called pastors and things. Mm -hmm. you, you call up somebody that you know is spiritual. 
and they may have the word if they don't have it then they can help you find it <clears throat> but you find the promise <clears throat> there'll be a promise on every situation of your life and you can find the promise but here's the here's the thing paul is even though you get a promise i know people that can quote scripture but the scripture is not in here it's in here but it's not in here when it gets in here is when god's speaking to you and somebody says how do i get it in there you keep speaking it and you keep thanking god with it this is like for instance let's just use healing we always use healing because it's the easiest one to use but if i was needing healing for something in my body <clears throat> then i'm going to take the word of god and i'm going to lift it up to the lord and what I do is I take the scriptures. I'm going to say Psalms 103. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then I say, Lord, who forgives all of my iniquities, who heals all of my diseases. Lord, you're the one who heals all of my diseases. And I speak it. <clears throat> and I remember, <clears throat> remember times that, excuse me, <clears throat> that I've had scriptures and words and promises that I in my mind my mind was saying this ain't never going to happen for you this won't happen for you but I knew the principle of keeping that with word speaking it out of my mouth with thanksgiving in my heart <clears throat> and then all of a sudden one day it was like it became real to me it's like in my heart it's like wow this is real <clears throat> it, and then that's when I was speaking it it was more power behind it and so you take that promise and you keep it in your mouth <clears throat> and then eventually <clears throat> now you're not saying it to make here's what's really something you're not saying it to change god you're saying it to change you you're saying it for it to become a reality in your heart in your heart so it'll be a reality in your life and <clears throat> there's many times many many times that I confess scripture about me in my life that in the first, whenever the Lord showed me this scripture, and he says, I want you to confess this over your life. I didn't believe it. I really didn't. <clears throat> I didn't believe it could happen. And there was a good reason for it, me not believing it could happen. But the Lord said, put it in your mouth. Keep saying it. And I would do it with thanksgiving and praising him. And all of a sudden, one day, it became true. Not just in my heart. It became true in my heart first. But it came, became true in my life. Things that the world says impossible for it to happen. But you, can you, you see what I'm saying, Paul? And here's the thing. If you don't have a promise on something, and if you come up to me and say, hey, I got this situation, what, where should I go in the Word to find an answer for it? And if I don't have it, I'll say, look, Paul, I don't have it, but I'm going to let you know we're going to, we're going to get an answer. We're going to find it. But that's where the Bible says, seek in, in Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom, the of, God. kingdom of God. You have to do the seeking. It, here's the thing. You can't depend on me to do your seeking for you. But if I got an answer for you, for you to go and, and start reading an area or something, or I might give you a teacher that's teaching on it. And you listen to the CD or tape or whatever. But you got to seek it. One of the things about God, our Father, He doesn't He doesn't judge you. And He doesn't look at you and say, you're bad or you're this. He doesn't do that. What He does is He looks at you and says, what's your heart doing? Are you, is your heart coming to me? Are you seeking me? I want your heart. I don't. I don't care about your deeds. Those are change. Those are the deeds are like fruit off of a tree. I I want to make your tree good. So seek me. And so you got to seek him. You got to you got to take the word of God and come after him, and seek him. And whenever he sees that, the Bible says he draws near to you. I like to say it this way. He becomes active and he becomes he wants to be active in your life he wants to be a part of what your heart's seeking if your heart's seeking him he wants to be a part of it but if your heart's seeking something else it's just like you 
If you get me, you tell somebody, hey, look, are you wife or your friend or what? Hey, I'll help you. You know, come here or, and we'll get together and we'll figure it out. And all of a sudden, I don't hear anything from you. What can I do? Can't do nothing. Well, it's the same way with God. Somebody says, well, yeah, God could do anything. No, he can't. In your life, he can't do anything. He can only do what you open the door for him to do. No, no, he's God. He's able. No, do you, you don't, if he could do anything, don't you think he would have stopped Eve, Adam and Eve from doing what they did? Somebody might say, well, that was just because he was setting everything up. No, no, no. He did not want them to eat of that fruit. He knew what was going to happen to him. It would be the most horrible, cruel, mean, the meanest person there is to get up there and say, I'm setting them up and they're going to die for it. That would be mean. Would you would you say that, that if somebody set you up to die, that that's mean? No, God set him up to be blessed. But here's what did God also did. He also gave them the will and the ability to make choices. And he gave them authority over the earth, authority over everything that exists on the earth. All the flying birds and the creeping things and all the fish of the sea and everything that's on the earth, they had the authority and dominion over it and God honored that. Same thing with your life. You have authority and dominion over everything in your life. And you can submit to God and he will move into your life and he'll bring his, his life into your life. And I, I, I may have messed up some religious people, but that's okay. Religion's always, I think it's created to mess up. You know, somebody says, well, rules. <clears throat> Need to keep rules. <clears throat> well, you know, sometimes rules are meant to be broken, especially those religious rules. But anyhow, going on, and uh, uh, you do have to have that positive response. Yes, sir. You going to say something, Calvin? Huh? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe you had something to say. <laughs> what time have we got here? I didn't have my hand raised. Right <laughs> <laughs> well, you cleared your throat. Maybe I thought that was it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so going back to Romans uh, chapter one, and we're gonna we're we're gonna be going on into a teaching, and I want this is I really don't. I don't know if I want to go into it today, but I'm going to read verse 18. No man has ever seen God at any time. Oh, oh that's wrong one. Romans. Terry, go back to Romans, son. All right, let me get there. Um, okay, all right, verse 18. And again, this is uh, getting into something that <clears throat> we're going to talk more about next week, but I'm just going to touch on it today. And it says, for God, uh, for God, uh, holy wrath or his anger his indignation are revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness repress and hinder the truth and make it inoperative now this scripture that was amplified by the way but I'll let you know I'm just going to say this from this verse on through chapter 2, I hated these two verses the most in my life. In fact, I avoided reading them for years because I felt that this is the way God was looking at me. I, before I was born again, you know, I, was, I, wasn't a, I did bad things. And even thoughts, I thought God judged our thoughts. And I didn't want the wrath of God to be on me. And in reality, I was scared of these scriptures, really. But after the Lord, he finally, I got finally calmed down and, and I started reading through them. And just like I described earlier, God started speaking to my heart and I started seeing some things. And I want, I want to go back and read verse 18 again. It says, for the... For God's holy wrath 
and indignation is revealed from heaven against ungodliness. And that's where I was thinking, man, that, that would be against me. And unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness repressed and hindered the truth and made it inoperative. Now, and then we go on, you'll see scriptures like well, verse 19 it says, For that which is known about God is evident to them and made plain in their inner consciousness because God himself has shown it to them. For even since the creation of the world, God's invisible nature and attributes, that is, his eternal power and, and the divinity have been made intelligible and clearly discernible in and through the things that have been made his handiwork. So men are without excuse, uh, altogether without any defense or justification. And, you know, I read that and I'm thinking, man, I am in trouble. You know, I read that, I think, well, surely the wrath of God is. I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking, one day, God's going to really put one on me. Uh, is a, and the reason I thought that, as I was raised in a Baptist, Baptist boy, all the days of my life. In fact, I got born again. I went to the Baptist church until I went to Bible college. And that was in 70, um, 70 76, when I went to Bible college. But anyhow... In, in what I was taught and when the evangelists and stuff were come, I heard it more than once that, that God is counting up our life. He's, he's recording. He's keeping a record of everything we say and do, which the Bible does say that that is the case. And then one day, whenever you go before the judgment, you're going to have it's going to be like a movie. And you're going to see your life flash before you. And you're going to see all that you've done. That's scary. <laughs> it's like. Well, see, that wasn't talked about. <laughs> they didn't talk about the blood and washed it all away. But here's the thing. I'll, the reason they did it, because they, back in the day, there was preaching hell, fire, and brimstone. And they wanted you to fear uh, God and fear his wrath and so therefore so that you would, wouldn't you know you'd want to go to heaven and not hell and you would make that decision by coming up and so that was the, I go back and think about it that's the purpose well here's the thing that's not true at all as Jeanette said you know I've, I've studied judgments that's actually one of the five foundational things that we need to study is judgments there's not one there's many judgments different judgments and so uh, it's not the case where for a Christian if it, <clears throat> when you get born again the blood of Jesus Christ has already cleansed you from your sin but all your sins are washed away right and then if you sin the Bible says the blood of Jesus continually cleanses, cleanses from our sin but I, this is the thing that that I found out is the greatest thing I ever found out and it made it a whole lot easier for me to read these scriptures is that Jesus is the one who paid for the wrath of God. All the wrath, this word, well, we read in verse 18 for the, it says for that wrath is revealed from heaven unto all righteousness of men. All that was put upon Jesus. Jesus took the wrath of God for all unrighteousness, for all sin, for all that men have done was put upon Jesus. And that righteousness or that wrath was was uh, paid for by Jesus himself. Now, here's one of the other things I got to let you know is that there's coming a day to where there is going to be a day of wrath to where all the grace the dispensations, you know, there's certain dispensations. We're actually living in the dispensation of grace. Well, there's going to come an end to the dispensation of grace, and then there's going to be the rule of Christ. And there's going to be a day of wrath coming after 
that thousand years of the rule of Christ and that all those who have not turned their hearts to Christ and that did not and uh, and hell, death, and the grave and Lucifer and all the angels will be cast into the lake of fire forever which burns with brimstone in the dark darkness and all. So all that's going to happen there's going to come a day of wrath that a, for those who did not receive his grace is going to be so there is a day of wrath but not for us <laughs> we actually going to be sitting on the throne with Jesus when those judgments will be ca uh, given out it won't be for us the Christian, not, not for the ones who made Christ their Lord that's good news. So uh, there's a lot to be said, and what what I, and here's another thing is, whenever we go into this ver these scriptures, um, this is actually one of the scriptures that people use to condemn people for their sins. And one of the main things that's mentioned in here, one of the things that are mentioned is is men lusting and having relations with men and women with women and so therefore people take this one section of scriptures and they say this is all about homosexuality in reality it's not <coughs> it's about all righteous unrighteousness of man it's about all wickedness of men about all of, that would be me and you and anybody else that have done wickedness and so the same thing even though the scripture is going to be talking or re relating to that the same wrath or the same punishment that would come upon us and them was put upon Jesus and we're not going to and one of the things I, and we're going to find out how this uh, the wrath of God has been satisfied at this point but there is still remember the word judgments there is still a judgment for sin here while we're on this earth the Bible says the wages of sin is death but the free gift is righteousness through Jesus Christ if a person chooses to practice sin they open the door for Satan and that Satan is going to come in and he's going to make sure that that sin the repercussions of that sin takes effect in your life and we're going to talk more about that next week, but uh, it's going to be really good. So I, I encourage you to come back, and uh, what hopefully I'll be able to relay to you is how God deals with people that are in sin, and how He uh, deals with uh, 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 people who choose to practice a sin. And you'll be really surprised because he is, a lot of folks think that God's judging people today. That he's issuing out, you know, judgment from heaven. He's not. The judgment he issued out from heaven was upon Jesus Christ. But there is a judgment for the sins of men that come on them, not because of God, but because of the men who are sinning. We're going to see that next week. And so, Father, thank you for this, and we ask you to bless it, Lord, bless this word, and help us, Father, get through this section of scriptures. <laughs> I, even though I had a hard time with it, Lord, I love it now because I see the truth in it. And I'm hoping to be able to relate that truth to people that will be able to, the, the religious people will stop judging, and the ones who feel like they're being judged, Lord, will be find that freedom in this truth and father i thank you for it in jesus mighty name amen and amen well god bless you guys thank you for being here and thank you folks for being on facebook with us and god bless you love it like it and share it amen all right